Welcome to the Ultimate Movement Guide for the Finals. In this guide, I'll be going over everything movement related that the tutorial doesn't tell you, which is a lot, including ways to make your movement smoother, a lot of movement techniques, and some things that nobody really knows yet. So without further ado, let's dive into it and start off with sprinting. Now, before we go over how sprinting ties into the rest of the movement techniques, I want to quickly mention that despite a lot of claims that I have seen spread around the internet, if you're traveling in a straight line from point A to B, without any obstacles in the way, the fastest way to go there is just by running. No sliding, no jumping, no slide cancelling or whatever, just straight up sprinting to your destination. It is pretty boring, I know, but the rest of the movement in the game does make up for it. So yeah, obviously a sprint is just gonna be a sprint, but there are certain movement techniques that you only can pull off if you are sprinting as you are doing them. A prime example is sliding as you land. You can only slide as you land if you were sprinting when you jumped. Which naturally leads me to a great expression called sprint queuing, which I believe is coined by Complice. Normally, if you are midair, but you didn't sprint when jumping or whatever, your weapon will be in more of a natural resting position. But if you hit sprint while holding forward, the gun will instead go into the sprint animation, which it would have if you just ran and jumped in the first place. This action is called a sprint queue, as it puts you in a state of sprinting. And as long as your sprint is queued, this will let you slide as soon as you land, even if you are standing still as you popped it. You can add a sprint queue when airborne off of a jump pad, off of a zipline, or if you just change your mind about how you want to land once you're already in the air. And of course, if your sprint is queued, you will also already be in a sprint as you land, which can then be chained into other types of movement or followed up with you continuing to sprint as you hit the ground. Another great use of the sprint queue will be the jump slide. This is the opposite of the more commonly known slide jump, where instead of sliding and then jumping, you jump and then add a sprint queue mid-air and then hold crouch as you land. Sprinting will take place in most of the techniques and even fundamentals that I'll go over in this video, and seeing as sprinting and sprint queuing is such a pivotal part for most of the movement techniques, rebinding it from hold to toggle is, in my opinion, a must, because if you don't, you'll find it really wonky to do a lot of things that should be straightforward because your fingers will just be too busy. Moving on, let's talk about sliding. At first, sliding seems like it works like in any other shooter, but after using it in-game, it should become pretty obvious that the sliding in the finals works a little bit differently. If you pop a slide on even ground, this will give you a slight burst of speed at the start, but at the cost of a slowdown at the end of the animation. If you try jumping before the animation has finished, you won't get a speed boost and get hit with a movement slowdown penalty instead. That being said, if you slide down small slopes or start a slide as you go over an edge, this will actually give you a small speed boost without the penalty, so keep an eye out for these when you are rotating or if you're just looking for ways to stay agile mid-fight. But anyways, about the slide, since going for a slide will temporarily raise your movement speed at the very start of the slide, this means that it can be combined with jump pads, either the ones you find on the map or the ones placed by medium players, or you starting a slide straight into them right before you get on them. As in where the slide will lead you onto the pad without you scraping across the ground. That's because your movement velocity actually multiplies with the gain speed from these jump pads, which will send you farther horizontally than if you would have just walked through or ran through them. Building off of that, something a lot of players don't realize is that you can actually look around during the entire slide without changing direction or losing any speed, which allows you to keep an eye on what's going on around you, or even shoot at any enemies who happen to be close enough. If you add a jump along with a sprint and forward key as your slide animation has ended, you can also pull off another jump in any other direction within 180 degrees in front of you. If you struggle with timing the end of your slide, keep listening for your slide sound. You're free to jump whenever the scraping sound ends. You can pop a slide almost instantly from a standing position after you've started a sprint. You start a sprint, and as soon as you start moving, you can throw in a crouch to start sliding. Make sure to get comfortable with how short this timing is, as it will help you stay on the move and throw off your enemies in the middle of a fight. Here's a good example of me doing just that. I'm standing right in front of my enemy, shooting at him, and then ending up popping my slide to throw his aim off and get me a free kill. Two of my favorite uses for this are either going from playing cover to instantly sliding out of the cover and challenging an enemy me, or reloading when sliding by starting a slide and then immediately hitting the reload key at the same time to start a reload and be fully refreshed by the time the slide has finished. As I've been playing a lot of heavy recently, I've also started throwing in the slide whenever I am cocking my auto shotty. Generally speaking, combining an action that keeps your hands busy with a slide will keep you on the move, make you difficult to hit, and keep your movement super clean. A great ankle breaker technique not many think of is the so-called tap strafe, which is a term borrowed from Apex Legends. But in short, the technique will allow you 
to jump in any direction that you want from the perspective of the onlooker, you really shouldn't be able to. To initiate a tap strafe, all you need to do is slide forward. Wait until the very end of the slide when the audio cue is gone, as we mentioned earlier, after which, while still holding forward and sprinting, you can turn any direction that you want, including 180 degrees behind you. This can then be followed up with another slide as you land, which you can then follow up with yet another tap strafe until you do too much and end up getting hit by fatigue. As for jumping, there is a few things I want to cover as well. First, let me get this out of the way. Despite being different sizes, all the builds jump and climb the same height. Don't get me wrong, they do have other differences when it comes to movement, but we will get to those later. While the finals doesn't have lurching or an aggressive air strafe or air acceleration, which is the movement mechanic that allows you to add additional movement midair, you can still sort of control your character as you are midair. And that's through one technique called air strafing, which lets you move around a decent amount when you are airborne. An exaggerated version of the air strafe can be done by hitting a jump pad, as it sends you midair, slowly looks to the right or the left while adding movement inputs in that same direction. This will slowly but surely actually turn you that way, and using this you can get really far on some maps like Soul Construction. But as I said, that's the exaggerated version in a perfect environment on a large scale. You can actually air strafe when performing normal jumps as well, though for much less of an effect. Just walk or sprint, jump, turn left or right when you're midair, and you'll find that you also still move a little bit to the side, though obviously not as dramatically as when you hit the jump pad. I also want to quickly mention the bunny hop or the bee hop. Unlike with sliding, jumping doesn't really affect your movement until your character starts getting fatigued, which is about three jumps in. This means that if you're flying forward at a rapid pace and you're about to touch the ground but you want to keep moving forward, all you need to do is jump as soon as you land to prevent the game from slowing down as you hit the ground. These jumps can be chained together a few times into other movement techniques and combined with slides or air strafes to kind of curve off to the side a little bit. And as I've mentioned many times previously, binding your jump to your scroll wheel does not seem to help with hitting the timing of the B hops, and if anything, it seems to just rob you of your speed. That being said, there seems to be a mechanic built into the game that helps you hit the timing of your jump, so if you hit the jump key when you are close enough to the ground, even if you haven't touched it, you will still get that jump off. I also want to add that unlike most other games, being airborne or jumping doesn't add any inaccuracy when aiming down your sights, so if you get caught midair, you are able to shoot back at your enemy who's supposed to beam you to beam them right back. As for climbing, there's actually a lot of intricacies with how it works in the finals, and once you've learned how it works, you can learn how to abuse it. First off, just to clear some misconceptions, despite being a different height, all the classes can climb equally as high. That being said, the sizes will interfere with some movement techniques, which I will cover later. You also need to hold or press both forward and the jump key to initiate a climb if you only press either in some situations. Like if you're falling off of a ledge and you didn't jump ahead of time, you will end up not climbing that ledge despite it being right in front of you. Another vital piece of information when it comes to climbing is that you can climb a lot higher by looking straight up. So if you think that you're not going to be able to climb something, make sure that you are looking straight up. Moving on, a climb animation cancel or a climb cancel is very straightforward. The climbing animation is really long and it has sort of a winding down animation that locks you for no reason once you've already climbed all the way up. So you're gonna be locked into said animation well after pulling yourself up where you want to go. To counteract this, you can cancel the animation of a climb by hitting the jump key. This allows you to perform another action, including shooting, or even climbing to another ledge that you are now able to reach. This means that you can climb through several ledges incredibly fast almost in the same animation by starting a climb while holding forward and sprinting while looking towards the next thing that you want to climb, cancelling the climb with a jump and then pressing jump again to climb to the next ledge. This can be repeated for as long as you have something to climb. You'll see the most use out of this technique if you're climbing through a broken building because you'll need to scale a lot of debris and rubble. You can also use climb cancelling when performing other movement techniques like window climbing to cancel the wind down animation and start a new jump much sooner. You can also shoot at that enemy despite being stuck in a climbing animation with the same cancel. So just by hitting the climb button again, you will immediately stop the climb and be able to shoot off rip. A common use of this animation cancel can be seen with the stair climb, where you're able to fly up a set of stairs by going into that set of stairs, starting a climb and looking around the middle of the railing, and as the climb has pulled you past the middle point of the railing, turning around 180 degrees and then looking towards the middle while cancelling the climb and then starting another climb over and over again until you reach the very top. A quick caveat, what part of the railing you want to climb from, as well as where you want to look slightly up, to the middle, or slightly down, will depend on what build you're playing and your timing. It also works different with some types of stairs, like Vs. The best way to hammer this down is to keep trying to pull it off and just 
keep practicing. You can also use the climb cancel to pull off a ledge boost. So normally if you try climbing a ledge and then slide afterwards, nothing really happens and you get stuck in the ground because you get hit by the penalty that we mentioned previously. But if you climb a ledge when sprinting forward, cancel the animation, throw in a jump and then follow it up with a slide, you will be able to go much farther forward than initially expected. I like to call this technique the climb boost, though some have likened it to a super glide from Apex Legends. If you struggle with getting cancels off, just keep at it. The cancel timing is the same no matter whether you go for a stair cancel or if you're trying to climb up a few ledges or windows, timing the cancel and then the subsequent climb will be key. You can crutch this and just spam the jump key and you'll kind of get it off, but I believe it messes with your consistency and honestly you should just practice to do it the right way because with enough repetition you will eventually get it down. Also a quick fun way to use the climb cancel will be throwing an enemy off if they're right on a ledge above you. Like in this clip where he was expecting me to climb upwards but I just cancelled the climb and shot him anyways. Another super valuable movement technique, probably one of the strongest in the game, will of course be window climbing which I mentioned earlier. Any build in the game can stand in the middle of a window, look straight up and then climb into the window above, assuming there isn't anything like a balcony or something blocking the way. And of course like with any climbing techniques, these two can be chained and allow you to scale entire buildings in no time at all. To perform a window climb, get into position, look straight up, walk backwards and jump. As soon as you are midair, hold forward to climb into the next ledge. If you want to climb more windows, wait a brief moment after you've started pulling yourself forwards through the window, walk a little bit backward and then repeat the same motion. If there is a slanted roof or some types of balconies that may be blocking your way, you can still perform the window climb. The easiest way to pull this off is while still standing in the window, turn away so you look out of it, jump straight out or slightly to the side and then immediately turn 180 degrees so you look upwards towards the ledge that you want to grab while holding forwards as well as the movement key in the direction that you're turning when doing that 180. If there is a tiny balcony in the way, all you need to do is either do a forward jump and clear it like with a slanted roof or perform a normal window jump and let the backwards jump drag on for a little bit farther before you add a forward input. If there is one of these tiny looking balconies with the flowers on top of them in the way, you can just destroy them by shooting at them for a little bit. Something really interesting that I found is that while you normally need to stand inside of a window frame to perform a window climb, which would mean that you need to destroy the shutters if they are closed, if you find a window with closed shutters that is about mantle height, so all the way up to your waist or so, you can just get up close to it, look straight up and then perform a few climbs to somehow glitch onto the ledge behind the shutters and then climb over them into the next window. Oh yeah, also another small thing, if you try climbing over an object when sprinting, you will not only climb on top of that object but also get sent forward a little bit. More often than not, there'll be a nuisance if you try climbing a small object like say a railing if you want to get up on a ceiling. If you want to get onto a railing without climbing over it, look 90 degrees away from it or just look away from it and then hold a side or backwards input while jumping to land on top of it without initiating a climb or getting any additional forward momentum which would send you off. And we're going to be covering a few more things in this video but before we jump into the next chapter I just want to quickly share a few super useful climbing spots that I've seen so far. You can climb up onto the cathedral by pulling off a double window climb off the outside of the staircase, jumping slightly to the side and then spamming jump to get on top of the slanted roof. After which you run up, get into a window, look up towards one of these ledges, climb to it and then climb up the last bit as well. You can take the zipline from the outer side of a crane as well, which normally is just a flashy extra thing you can do, but it is actually useful if you want to take a zipline to get up on this very specific building on Seoul. In the same vein, also on Seoul, but you can see these in other maps, these buildings with the glass roof can be scaled from inside. Just break the glass in the way, climb on the small railing on the top floor and then look straight up towards the ceiling while initiating a climb. I've also found that while it is really awkward to do a stair climb cancel when going up these indoor stairs, you can climb off of the last floor, perform a climb cancel and then immediately climb up to the last railing to skip running around onto the last floor. You can also cancel the last climb up the railing and jump and climb upwards to get into the attic instantly. I found that compared to most other stairs in the game, you will find more success with getting the mantles off if you look slightly down as you are going for it. If you are trying to perform a window climb or just climb up a building in general and if the building has these large railings on the roof, they will make the climb height too high and prevent you from getting on top of the roof through normal means. If you want to get on top of these buildings, you are going to have to find a balcony, jump up on the railing and climb from there. Speaking of climbing stairs, you can actually climb through these skylights which you will see on almost every map as well. 
just break the glass, get up on the railing at the top part of the stairs, and then run forward, jump, all while looking straight up to climb through it. Next up, let's talk about zip lines. Obviously, you can take a vertical zip lines and ride up or even down, depending on what direction you're going and looking, but there's a lot more ways to use it than just going up or down. Before we get into the nitty gritties, when traveling along any zip line, though most commonly a horizontal one, you can change the direction that you are going by jumping off, turning around midair, and then hitting the zip line again. I also want to highlight that unlike most games with zip lines, not only only can you shoot or use most one-handed abilities like holding a mesh shield or of course hitting the like button on this video, but when you do shoot, the shots will go right where your gun is pointing for as long as you're aiming down sights. This will let you absolutely beam enemies as you travel along that very zipline. And with the fundamentals out of the way, let's talk about something more interesting, something that most Apex players know as the super jump. As you ride a zipline and jump off of it prematurely, you'll get a bit of an additional speed boost and actually jump farther than if you would have let it go all the way up as long as you don't use it at the very end or at the very beginning of taking the zipline. So that means you can pull off a super jump at the start of a zipline as well. That being said, if you want to use it near the beginning of a zipline to maybe juke an enemy, you will need to wait a little bit until the zipline starts pulling you forward or upward and you feel that you're getting some speed before it's safe to jump off. Otherwise, you'll just kind of get stuck. I also want to add that other than just going for super jumps to get a bit more height, I've noticed that they can be really useful if you are rotating during the low gravity mode, as the speed from the super jump will multiply how far you go by a long shot. Another common zipline technique stolen from Apex is elite jumping or zipline spam. To pull this move off, all you need to do is start riding up the zipline, jump off, turn around 180 degrees, reattach, and then immediately jump, 80, reattach, and then just, you know, immediately jump, 180, reattach again. This can be repeated for the entirety of the zipline and will make you really hard to hit. Just be mindful that you don't try doing this at the very end of the zipline as you will be hit by the same fatigue that stops you from performing a super jump if you travel on it for too long. As I mentioned previously, you can also add a sprint cue to your jump as you leave the zipline to add a little bit of slight distance. This is especially useful if you need to dodge any enemy who might be waiting for you on the high ground. Jumping off of a zipline will always go in the direction that you are looking, unless you are adding a movement input, in which case it will go in the direction your movement input is going. So if you move to the right while jumping off, you will jump to the right but still be able to look straight forward. There is also an additional zipline tech that isn't fully ironed out at the time of this video, but it works like this. Some ziplines, like this one on Las Vegas, or these zip lines that go all the way up stairwells can actually be abused to bounce up and climb up onto those roofs. To pull this off, run and jump onto the zip line from a nearby platform and then spam the jump and indirect key as you are midair until it launches you forward. Make sure to look straight up as you are being flung to the edge to make sure that you grab onto it and actually climb on top. And now, before we head into the movement tech part of the video, I also want to add a few pieces of information that will help you out tremendously just by you knowing them. First, as I mentioned previously, different builds run at different speeds and while they do climb at the same height, their hitboxes will impact movement. Some techniques like the stairwell climbing will be more awkward if you're a larger build and a lot easier if you're playing light. And that's because you're so large, you're so bulky, and you'll just get stuck as you go up. For the same reason, this also means that you cannot fit in certain positions without crouching as a heavy, where a light player actually could sprint right through. In addition to that, a heavy will always be too large for these vents you can find on every map. When you go for revives, or stealing a cash out, don't just stand completely still because this will turn you into an easy target. You can spam crouch and slowly wiggle your aim back and forward to make it slightly more difficult for the enemies to hit your head, which might be the deciding factor whether you get the channel off or not. This clip is a good example of just that, and the player was unable to kill me for the heals and the movement and the fact of me being a heavy, which ended up letting us win the game. I want to add a section for class specific movement techniques and information as well, but seeing as this video is turning out to be really really long, we're gonna put that in a separate video instead. So if you guys wanna stay tuned for those, make sure that you've hit the subscribe button. The clips that you've seen with my face on it have been from my stream at twitch.tv slash otter, where I am constantly grinding ranked and trying to become the best at the game that I possibly can be. So come on and drop by if you have the time. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Peace out.